there's nothing more frustrating than having a slow computer while you're editing. And as a creative person, I want to spend my time and ideas, not in waiting for things to happen on my PC. And that is why we're sharing five tips today to increase the performance inside Adobe Premiere Pro. Hey folks, Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome to Creative Tuesday. And like I said before, I want to spend my day being creative. Now, one of the obvious tips is to upgrade your computer for a faster performance. And I'm only going to share one tip with you around computer hardware, and I'm even going to see this as a bonus. So after this, you're getting five more software tips. Because if your system is really slow, even some settings or workflow adjustments won't really help you much further. Now, I've been talking very close to Intel recently. They're also sponsoring today's video, so thank you, Intel, so much for that. And it was very interesting to hear from them that they work very close together with Adobe. They actually have have an internal team developing and testing to make sure that their processors gain the best performance and stability with the Adobe apps. So here are a few things to know about the processor of your computer. Unlike many people think that the graphical card is the most important, video editing tools like Premiere Pro utilize the processor a lot more. And that is why you'll also see a direct performance increase with having a good processor. Of course, keep in mind, if your computer is really old, a new CPU solely will not really help. Probably a newer generation CPU won't even fit in your old system. The Premiere Pro is designed to perform multiple calculations at the same time. And that is why you also need to look for a processor that has the most cores and not so much at the speed of the processor. Again, a little disclaimer here, having a 10 core running at only one gigahertz won't be so fast. Now we have talked about this in depth in a previous video where we guide you through all the components of a perfect video editing machine. We'll have a link to it in the description below. The next important factor is the processor generation. Although it sometimes seems like an updated processor doesn't really have much difference in speed, the architecture within has gone through a big upgrade. And as for Adobe Premiere Pro updates, it will make use of that new architecture. This results in better stability and utilization. Now, Intel sent us an entire machine to test out, which we've been working now with for more than a month, and it's been absolutely amazing. In our blog, you'll find a complete list of the components inside, which is a link you can find again in the description below. Now, they have packed the latest Intel i9-7920X CPU into it. It's a 12-core running at 2.9 clock speeds. Here's a performance graph while we are exporting a video from Adobe Premiere Pro. You can see it very good how it utilizes each core. Of course, we are aware that this is a high-end CPU and that it not fits within everyone's budget. And that is why Intel also have their i7 and i5 line, which you can find more information about by following the first link in the description below. All right, that about the hardware. The next tips that I have for you guys are pure software related. And we'll start off with the playback performance inside Premiere. The first ones might be obvious to some. This is the playback resolution. If you're working with high resolution footage and your computer has trouble playing that back in the timeline, then set the resolution playback at a half or a one fourth. Immediately, you will see that clips play back a lot better. Now, while you are editing, you don't always need to play back your clips at maximum quality. So from the tool button, you can open up a menu. Make sure high quality playback is disabled. Next are overlays. If you use things like save margins, then disable them under the same menu to increase your playback performance slightly. And finally are heavy effects that you can't play back. If you would like to view your timeline quickly without your effects, you can bypass that with a single click. Drag the FX button to your dock, and when it's now enabled, you will mute all your applied effects, making playback go smooth again. The second tip are a few things within Premiere Pro. Head over to the menu, choose Edit, Preferences, Autosave. While Autosave is a nice feature, it is known for giving stability and performance issues. Disable it and try to remind yourself to manually save your project now and then. Next, click on the Memory tab. Make sure Optimize Rendering is set to Performance and allocate enough memory to Premiere Pro. Finally, we'll head over to the Cache tab. Premiere Pro temporarily writes files to your hard drive while editing. By default, they are all set to your operating system's hard drive. But it's best to change their directory to a different drive that you have on your computer. And that way, both your operating system and the media cache will have the best performance read and write speeds without getting in each other's way. The next tip is about proxies. Your camera probably records in a heavily compressed video file format. And this means Premiere Pro has to decode them, which takes up a lot of resources. 
I'm not going to go too technical on this, but with a simple setting, you're able to automatically transcode your footage into an intermediate codec, which are much more easy to decode for Premiere Pro. When you start a new project, you can open up the Ingest Settings tab and enable Ingest. From the drop-down, select Create Proxies and choose one of the Cineform presets. The lower the resolution, the better performance you will get. Now, when you import your footage, you'll see Media Encoder opening up, and it will transcode your footage to that Cineform codec as a copy. Now, from your Program Monitor, you must drag the Toggle Proxies button to the playback bar. With that button, you can choose to which file your media has to link to, either to the original media or to the proxies. So now you can do your entire edit on the proxies, which goes much faster, and when you're ready to export, you swap it with a click of a button back to your original footage to keep the highest quality. But you can also generate proxies within a project you already have created. Simply select all your media files, right-click, and go to Proxy, and then hit just Create Proxies. The fourth tip might be obvious, but I do want to point it out because it's a deal-breaker. Keep your computer clean. If you're serious about video editing, then only install the Adobe apps on your system and don't install games or other apps that you don't need for your editing work. If you do like to play games and only have one computer, I would suggest to install a second operating system on a different drive. Keep your editing operating system as clean as possible. Try to keep your operating system up to date as well. Most updates are security fixes, stability and performance tweaks. These rules apply for both Mac and Windows users. A full hard drive is also not good. It will slow down your computer a lot, so try to keep at least 10 or 20% free space on any hard drive. For Windows users, I can recommend to install Windowsstat. It's a complete safe and tiny program that locates the big files on your hard drive from which you can manually delete them. And this is an app that I use for my work, so it's something that I need. I also like to play games, but not on my editing computer. I'll have a link to this app in the description below. Finally, our Premiere Pro plugins. You can find many third-party plugins for Premiere Pro, both free and paid. Bad plugins could give serious performance issues, even when you don't use them. So I would recommend to only install popular third-party plugins, usually these are paid, that you actually use. Don't install a plugin with the thought, hmm, this might come in handy someday, because then you're probably never using it and will only affect the performance of Premiere Pro. And finally, the last performance tip that I have for you guys are a couple of tricks that'll help if you are editing a large project with hundreds or even thousands of clips. First of all, click on the tool icon in the timeline and make sure duplicate frame markers is disabled. This is known for giving performance issues in long timelines. Large projects also take up long to open and can give serious stability issues. And therefore, it's advised to break your film project into multiple Premiere projects. This definitely works well if you have multiple sequences or videos. With the latest Premiere Pro update, you can open up multiple projects and swap media in between. And that way your individual projects could always stay connected. But if you are working on a specific part in your film or sequence, then do close the other projects for a performance increasement. I'm gonna leave you with a last resource from the Adobe Block, which goes really in-depth about how to speed up rendering, exporting, and encoding. There's a bunch of more information in there about how Premiere Pro works under the hood. You can find a link to it in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching, thank you Intel for the collaboration, and thank you Adobe for making such awesome tools. And to all of you, stay creative.